Hello, my name is Beth Gaffin. I'm the Media Literacy Coordinator here at the Peabody Public Library. And first off, I want to start by telling you that this class is a beginner class, which means that it's geared at your pace. So you can go as slow as you want, as fast as you want, minimize and stop this at any point and come back to it later if you'd like to. Um, also want you to be listening for the computer class pass code that will be inside of this class. Um, make sure you get that code to me. That way I can get you marked down for watching the streamed class. And without a further ado, I want to welcome you to Computers 101 or Basic Computers. Before we start the class, I want to let you know that you're going to be asked to do some various activities while you're in the class. The best way to complete these activities is by having a document to practice on. So for instance, if you have Microsoft Word, it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and open one of those documents to complete the tasks that I ask of you. Um, if you don't have Microsoft Word, you could download OpenOffice, and this is a free software that's just like Microsoft Office, and you can simply go to www www.openoffice.com or simply type open office in your search engine which is either that Google or that Yahoo field and download it from there. Um, if you need further assistance please call me at 244-5541 uh, and let me get you set up with this um, but a lot of these activities are going to require you to be doing some typing and things to that effect so having some kind of a document open and ready to go is a great idea. Okay, so just like any other class, um, you're going to have some terms that you're probably going to hear me saying as the class goes on. So I just want you to be a little bit familiar with some of these terms. Um, we're just going to start from the beginning here. Computer software, that, um, those are programs that provide the instructions that the computer executes. Your CPU, um, that's your core processing unit. Um, it's also the part of the computer that makes up most of your data processing. It's actually inside of that tower unit, or if you have a laptop, it's inside of your laptop. A database is a collection of electronically stored data. An Ethernet cable is information that travels from this cable from one computer to another, and it um, also allows you to get connected to the World Wide Web. Um, an external storage device is a device that can be easily removed from a computer and is often small and portable. A firewire cable is used to connect digital devices and external hard devices to your computer. A flash drive is a portable storage device that plugs into a USB port or an HDMI. Um, a Google Docs is web-based word processor, spreadsheet, presentation, form, and data storage. You can create and edit documents online while collaborating in real time. Hard drive is a device that holds information such as your software and your files. The internet service provider is a company that offers internet access to you monthly. Uh, your malware is software designated to um, damage your computer system without users informed consent so it can get on there and hack into your system. Uh, your windows, the most widely used operating system for personal computers. A monitor, this displays uh, cons this is a display consisting of a device that takes signals from a computer and displays them on a screen for you. Your mouse is a hand-operated electronic device that controls the coordinates of a cursor on your computer screen as you move it around on a pad. Your operating system is software that controls the execution of your computer programs. They may provide various services. It's also known as OS, or if you have an iPhone, it's an iOS. Without an operating system, no software programs could run. Piracy, this is an illegal copying and destruction of software. Plagiarism is taking someone's idea or writing and offering them as your own. This includes pictures. Uh, printers, those are output devices that produce text and graphics on physical mediums such as paper or transparency. Registered trademark is a name or symbol used for identification followed by an R with a circle around it. This indicates registration of intellectual property with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. A scanner is an electronic device that generates a digital rep representation of an image for data input to a computer, and usually it'll just go straight into your computer and come out on your monitor so you can see that scan. Your speakers are an output device that allows you to hear voice, music, and other sounds from your computer. USB cable is a cord that connects from devices to your computer. 
viruses. These are uh, programs that secretly attach themselves as a carrier to your document programs and then they launch some kind of a program um, to open it which could really really ruin your computer so you want to make sure you get an antivirus and we're going to be talking about that during class. Uh, word processing, this is a software program that allows you to create, edit, and print text documents. Hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of some of the terms that are related with computers. So we're first going to start off with the parts of a computer and this picture I have here is a tad bit outdated however I wanted you to see um, the past into the present and even just talk to you a little bit about um, you know then versus now but we're just going to start at the very top left there with our speakers and you can see that it's pointing to what your speakers look like and this actually brings out your sound so you can hear your music and and things to that effect there's a picture of that monitor and it's an output device that lets you see um, how it's working and what you're working on as you go and, and, it, and it displays it out to you kind of like a television. Um, a CD DVD D, uh, drive, it reads your CDs and your DVD discs and it's kind of hard to see in this picture but you would know what it is on your computer. It's what you put those discs in. Your system unit or your CPU which is that core processing unit, um, that's the case that contains all the memory. Uh, it supplies your power, it does all your disk drives, all the hardware, your modem, and any internal formatting. So that's the whole system is, is the system unit or the CPU or your tower it's also referred to. Um, the printer, it produces printed copies of a computer output so we can see how actually what a printer looks like. Your hard drive is actually located inside of that system unit or your CPU or tower and um, it is used to store programs and most of your data. A flash memory card reader which we can see there. A lot of the towers nowadays come standard with them just built inside but if you have an older version you may not have this built inside. That's not a problem. As you can see here you can buy them um, as a device that you can just plug in and use but these are used to read those memory cards that you have um, and maybe you have one in your camera or maybe even in your phone or something to that effect. So that's what that that is for is to read those. Um, a floppy disk drive, those don't commonly come in the computers nowadays. More of your older systems would have a computer, uh, the floppy disk drive inside of them. But you can buy them externally and plug them in just as you do that card reader. Um, and people still do use floppy disks. Um, not as commonly as we use our flash drives and our external devices, but people still do use them or may have information on them from way back back and just need to be able to continue to access that. Um, but it reads those disks is what that drive does. Of course you've got your mouse and this is what points you in your directions and you can click on your items with this. Um, there's a picture next of your CD and your DVD disks if you weren't sure what those looked like. And of course you've got your keyboard um, that allows you to type in instructions into your computer. There's a picture there of those of the uh, floppy the floppy disks that I was talking about in reference to the drive. Um, they're used for storing small amounts of data for backup or transporting from from one PC to another. Um, but like I said before, commonly people are more and more using the flash drives or the thumb drives, if you will, and other types of hard drive externally to store their information on rather than the floppy disks. But people still do use them as well. So, And then of course the last thing is your microphone. Those don't typically come standard with a computer when you buy them. Normally you would have to buy that separately unless you got some great package deal that just came with it. And they do make those. Uh, not as commonly now because you have your headsets and things to that effect, but this is um, what the microphone looks like if you didn't have a headset. So these are all components of the computer and all the parts of the computer. Next we're going to talk about setting up your computer and I actually have a couple of pictures here. The one to the left is a tad bit outdated. It's one of your 
older style um, CPU system units or your towers if you will and the one to the right kind of shows you the more common of what the computers look like nowadays and this is all in the back of the tower so on the left hand side we can see that um, the way that the computers used to be made and your computer may still have these features if you have an older one and sometimes they still make them in this fashion um, however they have added some features if they do still if you have a bought a new computer and it has it this way the picture to the right kind of shows you a little bit more commonly of what it looks like nowadays um, but you can see here you've got a keyboard output and your mouse and those are also color coded not only are they color coded on the back of your computer but they're also color coded on the device itself so if you look at your keyboard and you have one of these older plugs uh, most of the keyboards you get nowadays have a USB plug and you can just plug them into USB but if you do have one you're going to notice that the end of it's purple it kind of and it matches that purple and your mouse is going to be green and it matches that green and not only that but you have the pictures there that on the back of your computer that show you so if you know you're you have a hard time um, being able to distinguish colors then the picture here would be a great great reference for you it shows you the actual keyboard and the mouse so you know where to plug those in and then you have your USB ports and this would be where you would plug in any USB ported devices, maybe your phone or, or maybe you have an, a different type of keyboard that requires that or your flash drive or something to that effect. So those are your USB. And then you've got your Ethernet port and that's where you connect in your network, which is your um, internet system and that would be your dial-up from there. Um, and then you've got your the modem hookup, which is shown there and, and it comes with with uh, you know with that modem that you can hook right in there you've got your printer port um, a lot of them nowadays don't have they don't look like that um, I'm going to show you on the next picture there what they look like um, and then you've got your VGA port that's where you'd hook in your monitor and those are pretty common you find those just about anywhere and your game ports um, joystick commonly those don't come on those anymore you can just um, they're either wireless or you can plug them into USB ports uh, but then again you've got your speakers um, and it's also indicated to you with a speaker next to it so you know your line in would be like your headset or your microphone um, and your microphone is down below so you can see all of the different features that you may possibly have on on the back of your system unit or tower now on the right hand side we have a little bit more of a common look of what what the computers nowadays that you would purchase might look a little bit more like and we see um, I do have an arrow pointing down to that HDMI and it's circled that's just a new kind of port it's very similar to your USB except you're getting that high definition out of it um, instead you can now see if you look to the left um, where it said shared single port they've now combined our keyboard and our mouse into one port and we can see that it's split um, one side is purple one side is green like we saw before and you even still have your pictures so you've got the keyboard to the left and you've got your mouse to the right so it's just letting you know that that is now a universal port and you can plug both of those I mean, obviously not at the same time um, more than likely your mouse probably would plug into your USB port now and your keyboard would plug in there or vice versa that and actually next to that HDMI we see that SPDF out um, in that second picture right next to that circle that's actually what your new printer port would look like um, I have it circled there for you just so you can get a little bit better idea of what that looks like but that's where your printer port would be and we can see now we have extra USB um, to the right even of that you have extra USB plug-ins or ports because everything comes that way it seems like nowadays with USB still have your Ethernet and you still have all of your other plugins with your speakers and your microphones and and things to that effect but I wanted you to get an idea of what goes to what how you get it in there and what these are on the back so hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of how you would actually set up your computer from this part of the uh, computer Turning on your computer and monitor is pretty uh, pretty basic. I just wanted you to kind of be aware of what to look for. If you have a desktop with that big
big system unit, you're actually going to have um, a button that you just push that turns on the computer. And typically the button looks like that, that button here on the slide that's centered. They all, kind of, they all have that picture on them. Uh, they may not all light up in green. They may not light up at all. Um, but you do have a button on the front of your computer that has this picture on it. And you would push it for on and off. If you have a laptop, it's going to be up closer to the monitor. Um, now, turning on your monitor, you would do it straight from the monitor in the front. And again, it's going to have either this picture on the key or above it. So why don't you take a moment right now and go ahead and take a look at your computer. I Not only do I want you to take a look at your computer, but I want you to look at the back of it, the front of it, all around it. I want you to understand that the slide before that we saw for setting up your computer, I want you to look at the ports that you have on the back of your computer in comparison to what I've shown you, as well as being able to turn on your computer and these buttons. Just get yourself a little familiar with the um, buttons and turning them on and all the ports and everything in the back and, and what you have uh, for your computer. So go ahead right now and pause this video and just take a real quick look at all the features you have with your computer. Once you get that computer turned on, um, more than likely, if you have one of the newer computers, it's going to require you to log into your computer. And um, if you're turning your computer on for the very first time and you're trying to get everything started up, you would just follow the rules of the computer. It will pretty much set itself up. You just turn it on and it's going to make you create an account. And once you create that account, that's going to be your, what you would actually be logging into your computer with. So just follow the rules on your computer or the instructions of how to set it up and it pretty much guides you on how to do it. If you're having a problem being able to set up your laptop or something to that effect, get a hold of me and we can set an appointment for you and sit down and set it up together. Um, if you have a desktop, it's going to be a little bit harder to bring in um, a large unit like that, but I'm more than willing to do what I can for you. So we can bring that in, you can bring that in as well, and we can try to get that set up for you here at the library. It'd be a lot to carry in, but it's well worth it if we can get you all set up. So um, here's where you would actually be logging into your computer and it would be whatever you set your computer up as when you did it. I just wanted you to see that this is typically how it's done now. If you have an older computer it may not require you to log in at all. But if you have a newer laptop or a newer desktop or newer devices then um, more than likely it's going to make you log in. So you want to make sure that you write down all of the information ahead of time. That way when you do get to the screen you are able to do what it's asking you to do. Now that we have a little bit better understanding of the parts of our computer, how we can turn our computer on, logging it in, and kind of kind of setting it up. Uh, setting up your computer is something that we would probably have to do together so you have a little bit better understanding of how to do that. But if your computer is already set up and you already know how to log in and you already know how to turn on, then here we are with the parts of the keyboard. I just want to kind of go over the parts of the keyboard and um, what features that you have. So we're going to start in the top left corner with that red escape key and escape allows you to get yourself out of a program and what I mean by program is if you are working on Microsoft PowerPoint or some kind of a project that um, or a slideshow by pushing escape it'll take you right out of there and back into where you were when you were working on it. So um, we're actually going to get the opportunity I'm going to give you the opportunity to just kind of play around with your keyboard here in a little bit. Um, and then you've got your function keys. And each one of these keys means something. I believe that uh, your F12 would be your Wi-Fi turning it on and off. Um, your, between your F5s and your F8s are your volume buttons and your mute and then you've got your brightness in F2 and F3. Um, and the F11 will reset all your factory settings, but there's a key to that. It's not just going to happen as soon as you push F11, so don't, so don't get uh, too paranoid or anything about that because it's not going to just happen from pushing it. Um, but each one of these functions does something. Um, a lot of times we have to use the control key before that or the shift key. Um, we don't typically use them on a regular basis. 
uh, just because a lot of people just don't know what they do. So uh, later on, I, I plan on having a class that involves more of the keyboarding only. And when we do that, uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about those function keys and what they do. But they all have a purpose, and they all do something. Uh, then you've got your typewriter keys, and that's all in that kind of bluish gray color, and those are all um, highlighted for you. And then you've got your extra keys, which is like your print screen, your scroll lock, and your pause break. You, um, you may have a keyboard that has the keypad, which is on the right. And then you've got your enter key, which is part of your typewriter keys. But the reason they've singled that out for you is because it's a pretty important key. Uh, then you've got your cursor keys, and this just kind of moves you around um, past your letters, underneath your letters. You can just move from move around a little bit easily in within your doings. And you've got your shift keys, and those have functions as well that allow you to do certain things. And you've got your space bar, and we know what that does. It spaces out our words. You've got your alternative keys or your alt keys, and those also, um, in combination with other keys, give you some commands. And you've got your control keys, and then the windows key. So you can see here that uh, these are all parts of the keyboard. So just take a minute now and just kind of look at your keyboard in comparison to this keyboard. It may or may not be the same. You may have extra buttons on yours. Looking at mine, I can see that I do. I have some extra buttons on mine. Um, but then again, you may have not as many that are on here. So just take a quick glance at your keyboard in comparison to this one. This slide here is just showing you the keyboarding basics and where your home keys are and where your fingers will end up being. So for example, we can see that the black um, bordered in letters on each side are our home keys. So the pinky would go on the A, the next would be on the S, D, F, and your pointer would be on the J, K, L, and so on. And you can see by color coding, which finger is going to operate which letters or numbers. So we can see um, how it's columned out for us. And there's even that black line right in the center to let you know that which side is your left side, which side is your right side. So you can definitely see where your finger should be placed. And I know in the beginning it, it's not going to happen this way, but as time goes on and you start becoming a little bit more familiar with the keyboard and the techniques of the keyboard, um, you're going to want to try to not look at the keyboard when you're typing. You would want to face forward at your monitor, keep your back straight so you don't get the, the hunch or anything, the hunch back, and we can end up with back pains from being in a chair all day. We know how that goes. So you want to make sure that you're sitting up straight, facing forward, and learning how to do these techniques without looking. Um, in the beginning, you'll look. That's just how it goes. And I still, to this day, um, will sometimes just not thinking about it, look at my keyboard while, I'm, while I am typing. So just kind of get yourself a little familiar with this chart and how your keyboard will look in comparison to where your fingers go and what you will be using your fingers for. Now we're going to do um, a beginning typing activity, and this is what I was talking about when I said you're going to want to have a document up to practice on. This um, particular one, if you have internet at your home, you wouldn't need a document to come up. Um, this has actually been taken from a website. If you go into your search engine, which is either that Google or Yahoo or whatever you use, and type in um, learn typing, there is a website, learntyping.org. Um, it's seniornetlearntyping.org. But they have excellent, excellent keyboarding exercises. So um, I have just taken this from there. And it's letting you know the basics of keyboarding and where your fingers are going to be placed from left to right. And Basically, um, what I would like for you to do is just do what they're asking you to do on the right-hand side um, of the picture. They're asking you to start with your left hand and do ASDF space, ASDF space, ASDF space. You're only working with your left hand right now. Okay, so go ahead and minimize this video 
and go into your document that you've opened and just practice that. ASDF space, ASDF space, ASDF space, until you get to um, however many you feel comfortable with. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, so now that you've had the opportunity to do that, we're going to go the other way with it. And again, we're still just working with our left hand. And you would do FDSA space, FDSA space, FDSA space. So minimize the video now and pause it and go back to your document and do it the other way. FDS, FDSA space, FDSA space, okay? So now we're going to work with the right hand, same concept. JKL semicolon, JKL semicolon, JKL semicolon, things like that. So you can go ahead and pause this now and work on that right hand and do it the other way when you're done with that. And then when you get finished with those, now they want you to combine both hands. And you're going to do FD, FDS, FDSA, and then JK. So you're getting yourself familiar with those home keys, which is the ASDF and the JKL semicolon. Okay, so you're going to learn how to flex those fingers. Um, they're showing you there at the bottom. You're going to flex those fingers a little bit and kind of work. And if you get confused, go back to your chart that shows you where your fingers are supposed to be. And you can definitely get on there. So go ahead and pause this video now. Minimize it. Stop it. Go to your document, unless you're on the site. If you are on um, the learning learning uh, beginning typing site you can just do it straight from the site um, if you are not which I have provided that site for you so you can just type it right in um, if you are not on that site then go ahead and pause and minimize this video and go back to your either your word document or your open office document and practice these keyboarding techniques Continuing on with our keyboarding exercises, um, and again, I've provided you with that website so you can get on there, and they have levels and levels and levels of different kinds of keyboarding techniques that you can do for free at home that doesn't cost you anything. Um, but I want you to go a little bit deeper with it, and it's still working on both those hands, doing the GH and how you're going to kind of bring over that finger now and catch those two. So your two pointer fingers would be G and then H, G and then H. Um, and then you're going to stretch that, your left index finger up and out to that T. And again, refer back to your chart if you're not sure where exactly your fingers are supposed to be. And then you're going to work on just the left hand, the right hand, and then both hands again. But this is a great way to get yourself used to typing and the techniques and where your hands are supposed to be. And it is a lot easier to just go to the website. But if you do not have internet, doing it on a document would work just as well so you can see it. Um, and you would probably be able to have that document up at the same time that the class is going. So if you wanted to continue listening and doing your keyboarding techniques, then you can do that. So these are the keyboarding exercises that I provided for you to do. And again, you can get those at the websites that are above, or you can just do these on a Word document. And the more that you do them, the more familiar you're going to be able to come with that keyboard, and the more you're going to be get used to where your fingers go, where the letters are, and, where, and uh, being able to not look at the keyboard when you are typing. So go ahead and minimize this video and pause this video or stop this video. Go to this website and try some of the different activities that they have or just go back to your Word document and just try exploring with your fingers and seeing how it's going to work when you're doing those keyboarding techniques. Okay, so now we've come to the part in the class where we're going to talk about the mouse. Um, this particular picture is just parts of your mouse. It's showing you the primary key, and it's showing you the scroll wheel and the secondary button. So your primary button applies all of your actions. So you're double clicking or clicking on a site or dragging or anything like that is done with your left click. Uh, the second one there, your scroll wheel, by pushing, or not pushing, but uh, moving that wheel as if it was a tire spinning, um, it's going to move your pages up and down, and it's a lot easier than finding those scroll bars 
and moving your pages that way. So you can experiment a little bit with your mouse on that. And then your third one, which is your secondary button or what I call your right click, uh, your right click gives you a menu no matter what you're in, what you're doing, you can right click on it and you're going to get some kind of a menu. Now it may not be a menu you want or the options you want aren't all there, but for the most part you're going to just you're going to get a menu and um, that's the purpose of what the right click is. So go ahead right now and just take a look at your mouse and explore with it if you'd like and see uh, all the, the three different buttons that I'm referring to. Using your mouse um, is fairly simple and you can see here to the left um, as time goes on, you're going to use your mouse how you're going to use your mouse, and it's not going to matter um, what anybody tells you. Whatever you feel comfortable with doing with it is what you're going to do, but there are actually wrong and right ways of doing it. Um, if you start to notice that your wrist is bothering you or something to that effect, it could be that the way that you're using your mouse is causing that to happen. So to eliminate that, you might want to try some of these techniques that they have here, and it's showing you to the left um, the wrong way and the right way of how you hold it and how you kind of move it around. And that bottom picture there is just showing you what exactly your mouse is controlling and that's going to be that arrow or your cursor. Um, but as you probably know, a mouse is a small electronic device that enables you to send signals to your PC. It sits on a mouse pad technically. Uh, sometimes we don't use those, but um, it can sit on a mouse pad. It has a tail and um, the electronic cord that links to your PC is that tail and it's usually pointed away from you so it's not going to be behind the mouse to get in your way. Um, as you move the mouse back and forth along the surface of the mouse pad or your desk or whatever you're using, you see a pointer or arrow moving on the computer screen. Uh, there's a button on the rear surface of the mouse. Click the button to tell the computer to do something and what it's meaning there is that left click. Um, it's giving you the, the commands, if you will, of the left click and the right click gives you a menu. So if you will, go ahead and pause this video right now and also I've included a website there. If you have internet, type in this website www.seniornet.org backslash how to backslash mouse exercises backslash mouse practice or you could just go into your search engine and type um, using my mouse or mouse exercises and you're going to find this website. It's probably one of the first two on there and it has a it has excellent excellent mouse techniques of being able to learn how to click when to double click and things to that effect so I highly recommend that you go and check out that website if you don't have internet just go ahead and pause the video and go to that document and just kind of play around with what your mouse can do these are some of the features that go along with using your mouse, pointing, clicking, and dragging. Um, for instance, if you like something on Facebook or whatever and you just put your cursor on it using your mouse and um, do nothing else, then that's just pointing. That's just putting it on top. And if you're actually doing that website, and I've got it listed here as well for you on that mouse exercises, the first one that you do is actually just pointing. And when you put the mouse on top of the numbers, they disappear. That's the same kind of concept. You're not pushing anything. You're just pointing at it. And uh, your left click would then apply it. Um, you can select on an item with your left click by moving the mouse pointer to that item and then pressing and releasing that left Bus, that left button on the mouse, um, this is called clicking. So to continue, you would click left on the mouse button if you're wanting to check something like it shows in that left clicking um, feature and, and so forth. So the other side of that is your right clicking, which the exercises on the mouse site don't do the right clicking because all right click does is give you a menu. That's it. So anytime you're in something and you right click and you can see at the bottom it says that that is an example of a right click menu. Um, I, the, the person right clicked and they got some kind of a menu option that you can go in and do things within whatever you're in. So the left click applies your actions and the right click gives you the menus for options. And then of course dragging, the way that you would drag and that's the last um, picture there is that you would left click on whatever it is that you want to highlight or 
picture that you might want to drag and you would press on that and don't let go keep the left on there and then just take your mouse and drag it over literally just drag it right over and um, if you do have internet and you go to that website that has an excellent excellent drag and drop um, exercise for you to do if you want to learn more about the mouse and you don't have internet and you're not quite understanding how it works please get with me and we can set you an appointment to, to learn how to use your mouse because it is important to understand how to use it therefore you're not clicking on a bunch of things and giving your computer a whole bunch of stuff to do and then we get frustrated because it takes so long and so forth so definitely get with me if you're not sure on how this works um, and that's your pointing clicking and dragging last thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to the mouse is that scroll wheel. I just want you to understand what exactly it does and that's that little wheel right in the middle of your mouse. Um, it just allows you to not have to use the scroll bar so by turning that wheel it's going to actually turn your pages for you and and move your pages around and to the right we can see that we have a we have actually a scroll bar on there and by turning our wheel we're going to be able to make those pages go up a lot faster than having to click on that bar and drag it down and things like that. So our scroll wheel um, makes life a little bit easier on us when it comes to being able to flip through internet pages or documents or something to that effect when we're doing them. Again, I have this website on here, theseniornet.org. I can't express enough that if you have internet, please go there and visit it and do some of the techniques so you have a little bit better understanding of how to use your mouse. All right, so a lot of information up to now as far as the mouse goes, so I just want to do a little quick recap. Um, just to remind you that the left click of the mouse allows you to choose a specific option from a menu, whereas the right click of the mouse actually displays a menu, and that's all it does. And your scroll wheel in the middle allows you to go through your pages a little faster no matter what you're in. Um, so just familiarize yourself of what the left click does versus the right click and what the scroll wheel does. Um, here I've provided you with that website again and I've also provided you with a couple other websites that are very very good for doing and using your mouse and some techniques so if you have internet please at this time pause minimize uh, this video type in some of these websites and get yourself familiar a little bit more with your mouse I want to talk to you now about finding a file on your computer because sometimes we create documents for ourselves or like for example if you decide today that you want to save the keyboarding technique that you did in Microsoft Word or OpenOffice or whatever document you used um, to do that you might want to save that and then once you save it you're probably wondering uh, where it went okay um, typically you can find all of the files that you're looking for on your computer by going to your start menu which is going to be in that bottom right hand corner if you don't um, have Windows 8 it's going to be in that start menu if you have Windows 8 you'll want to go to your desktop and you actually have a button that looks like a file and I've circled it there for you so you can see what the file button looks like and um, you're going to push on that file button or your computer button um, from your start menu and you're going to see that it's going to pull up to the right there everything that's on your computer and it starts at the top and I have it all circled for you there um, your desktop that's going to be that main that main screen where all those icons are so if you double click on them they take you places um, your downloads that's going to be anything that you've downloaded off of the internet or possibly from a disk or something onto your computer your recent place this is just going to be where you have visited lately. Um, of course you have your libraries and those are typically where your documents or your music or pictures or videos are going to end up going. So um, if I, the best place for you to look for that would be under computer and then documents and you're going to see a bunch of different kinds of um, files that are there. If you can't find it there, check your downloads. It's on your computer somewhere. You also have a search field in your computer 
um, on the computer part of it. And what I mean by that is from hitting start and then computer, once you get into the computer screen, which is the one to the right there, you actually have a um, search feature in the upper right hand corner that'll search your computer. So you can type in what you're looking for as well and it will um, search your entire computer for what you're looking for. So right now, um, go ahead and minimize this video and pause it. And I want you to open up your files. So you would either do that if you are um, not on Windows 8, you would do that from your start menu and that's that little circle bat down in the bottom left hand corner. By pushing that, you're going to get this menu to come up, and then you're going to push on computer. And I actually have an arrow pointing to computer for you. And then you are going to um, see that the computer file or the computer programming opens up, and that's to the right, and it shows you everything that's in your computer. And I want you to locate your libraries um, that have your documents, your music, your pictures, and your videos. And more than likely, that's going to be wherever the item is you're looking for. That's probably where it's going to be. So go ahead right now and just give that a chance, and just just check it out. You're you're not hurting anything. You're just you're just looking at your own computer. So go ahead and do that right now. If you participate in the Computer Class Pass program, your secret code is I love computers. Once you locate that file that you were looking for, and we can see here that this is showing you your libraries again, and maybe it's in your documents, opening a file on your computer is fairly simple. You're just going to go to wherever the file is once you find it, and <coughs> excuse me, and you're going to just double click on it and it's going to open. Now I've also circled that uh, search documents field. Every time you're in something, you're going to get that search field. So if you're looking for something and you know it's in your documents and you just have so many of them that you can't find it, you can go to that search documents field and you can type in what it is you're looking for and it's going to find it on, on your in your documents. So that field is the same as what I was talking about before um, with your computer. When you're on the computer part of it, after you've gone to that start menu and clicked on computer and you've got all these functions, you also have that search computer feature. So there's always a search something depending on what you're in. And in this situation it shows us at the top um, that we're in libraries and documents. So there my search field would be my documents because that's what I'm in. So I went ahead and circled that for you. But once you find what you're looking for on your computer and you find that file, opening it is very, very simple. You're just going to double click on it. So go ahead right now and pause this video and just explore your computer a little bit on double clicking on some of these files that you may have um, and getting them open so you can see them opening. If you're having a hard time being able to open these files or these documents, uh, get with me and we can schedule you an appointment and I can show you, just you and I, how, how this works. Um, but if you're getting it, then we don't need to meet and just kind of give it a, a try because you can't mess up anything. It's just a save document. It's not going anywhere. So go ahead and play around with opening a file on your computer. Saving a file on your computer is pretty easy. However, it can get tricky sometimes um, because we sometimes may not know where exactly our file went that we saved. So if you saved your Word document, um, I'm going to show you to the left there that um, if you want to save your your Word document, maybe your typing techniques that you've done in class today, then you would go up to your File button in the top left-hand corner, and then you would click on Save As. And when you click on Save As, we can see here um, in the bottom left-hand picture, this is what our Save As screen set is. And Microsoft Word automatically puts these in your documents, but you can also see where it's going to put it and you can change that location. So when this box comes up for you to save, uh, you can actually go to the top and choose a location. And in this situation, I've circled it in black for you. Um, they've chosen to save it in my documents. And then you can choose to change the file name or name your file altogether. And I have it circled for you there at the bottom at that Save As box. And here's where you can actually name it, whatever it is you want to name it. And if you wanted to save the file type, um, you could. But in this situation, they're using Excel, so we're going to leave it like that. And 
it's automatically going to save it to your document. So saving a file on your computer is pretty, pretty simple. Um, now, if you decided that you wanted to save it to a drive, let's say that you have your own flash drive or an external drive or something to that effect that you have plugged in, you would need to locate that. And uh, the best way to do that would be on my computer, which you're still going, and you can see the right-hand picture there um, where right underneath libraries was where we found the documents, videos, music, and all that, um, is your computer. And that's going to show you everything that's plugged into your computer. So if you actually wanted to save it on a device that you may have plugged in, then that would be where you would do that. Um, again, don't let this discourage you. If you're having a hard time figuring out how to save files, please get with me and call me, and we can schedule you an appointment to get you um, going on saving a file. It really isn't difficult once you learn how, you're going to think, oh, why didn't I get that the first time? Um, but I can't understand where it gets a little discouraging. So I don't want you to feel that way. But if you're familiar with computers and you know that save as feature or what have you, and you can find these, then please do so and go ahead and experiment. I mean, at this point, you can't hurt anything on your computer at all. You're just playing around with your computer. You need to get to know it and you need to know, get to know what it can do for you. So go ahead and pause and minimize this video and try practicing saving a file on your computer. If you haven't been using Microsoft Word or OpenOffice because you have internet access and you don't have a document up right now, go ahead and open up a document anyway and just type yourself a sentence on it or something and save it to your computer so you can get familiarized with saving it. And remember, if you're saving a Word document, you're going to click on that file button in the upper left hand corner and it's going to give you a menu that comes down and you'll click on save as. Okay. Actually, since it would be brand new, you could click on save or save as, but it's getting, it's, it's good to get used to clicking on the save as when it's a new type of document. So go ahead right now and, and just practice saving your files in different locations. Creating folders is pretty easy. I'm going to show you the best way of creating a folder. If you want to create a folder just on your desktop, and that's the very first screen you see before you click on anything when you get into uh, your computer, if you have Windows 8, you could just click on um, your desktop, and that's going to open for you. And then we know now with our mouse, if we right-click, we get a menu. So go ahead and right click on that screen and when you do you should see a menu and you can go down to where it says new and it has an arrow and once you put your mouse on new another little sub menu is going to come off of that and you can push on folder and then you can rename it and there you go you've created a folder and it's now on your desktop now if you want to create a folder in your documents then you would go to your documents by going to that computer that start and then computer and getting that screen up and then you can go to documents and you would do the same thing just right click on the screen in documents go to new then folder and then click it and you've just created a new folder. So now you can put um, your documents in there or anything to that effect. And again, I can't express enough that you can't mess anything up. Um, worst case scenario, your folder's not going to come out. So, um, and, in, and you know, just to get rid of it, let's say you've added it now and you're like, okay, now what? You can just right click on it again and then there's a delete. And you, if you push delete, it goes away. Or you can just click it with your left click and push delete on your keyboard. And either way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remove that folder for you. But go ahead right now and minimize, pause this video, and create yourself some folders. Uh, do that on your desktop, do that in your documents, do it in your music. It doesn't matter where you're doing it and again you're doing that by right clicking and then new and then folder and then you can name it whatever you want and again if you're having problems with this just give me a call and we can meet and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about on setting up uh, your folders. Windows 8 set up just a tad bit different. Um, you can actually go into your charms if you go to the right hand side of the screen, um, either corner, the upper right hand corner or the bottom right hand corner, you're going to get that little charms menu that comes out. Or you can push your Windows key plus the C key and that charm key is going to, or the charms are going to come out. Go to your search and then you could, from the uh, search field, you could type in files or you may even have files underneath your search and then you could click on that and then look 
for whatever file you're looking for within that. So Windows 8 is just a tad bit different. If you haven't had an, have not had an opportunity to take the Windows 8 class and you have a Windows 8 computer, uh, get with me. I know that we're going to be doing that class again in July 2014. So if you um, want to learn a little bit more about that, you can attend that class or just call me and I can set you up an appointment and we can do Windows 8 together so you can have a better understanding of how you're going to find those files and folders. Okay, so this slide here is just kind of showing you some examples of some portable storage. Um, I'm just going to start left and go on, go on over. Um, you've got your micro disk drive, the SIM chip or the micro SIM card, um, the Java ring, which is kind of like an I button. Those aren't very common. Um, you've got your memory stick and then there's a ton of different kinds of USB flash drives and I'm just showing you the different kinds of designs that um, you might be able to purchase. Uh, but these are just kind of some examples of some portable storage devices that you can use to keep pictures, videos, documents, whatever you want to get off of your computer and free up some space for, um, you could purchase these. And these can all be purchased um, at your local Walmart or if you're an eBay shopper, you can buy them on eBay for fairly cheap or Amazon, um, Best Buy, any kind of stores like that. Um, even your Dollar General stores might even have some of these items. So um, you might want to just kind of check in to see what might work best for you as, part of, as far as um, having a portable storage device. This is just another slide kind of showing you some different um, storage that you can use. It's a little bit more in detail. Um, that right picture over there shows you your CDs and your floppy disks and your rewritables. That's what the RW means. It means you can rewrite that um, once you've erased it. Or recordables. You've got your memory sticks. Um, you also have online storage sites and that's kind of like that cloud storage. So if you want to know a little bit more about storage devices, what they can do for you and how you can use them, please give me a call so we can set you up an appointment so we can kind of get um, you more familiar with some of those storage devices because they really can become handy for saving those important documents or music files or videos that you don't want to get rid of and you want to be able to keep a hold of. So um, definitely check and see what you might have or check into some of these to see if you might be interested in purchasing yourself some type of storage. Okay, so when we're ready to shut down and um, go ahead and, and and get finished with everything that we've been doing, we're going to go to that start menu and that's in the bottom left hand corner of your computer and when you click that kind of like you did when you got into your computer and was looking around in your documents, then you're going to push on shut down and when that happens um, you might be prompted with another um, picture that comes up and says turn off your computer are you sure and you can confirm that that is in fact what you want to do but typically when you hit the shutdown button um, it's going to just shut down your computer and you've safely shut everything down and you're good to go so once shut down you can begin the process all over again so go ahead right now and start your computer if you haven't um, well obviously you have because you're on it um, but when you're done with this class go ahead and shut down your computer restart it shut it down again um, and just kind of play around with the starts and the restarts and that little arrow next to shutdown gives you more type of shutdown options which would be the standby turn off and restart so go ahead right now and minimize this video and just kind of play around with the shutdown feature shutting down in Windows 8 is just a little bit different than it is just for the XP Vista and Windows 7. Uh, the way you're going to do the shutdown for your Windows 8 is you're going to pull up that charms menu and you can do that by either going to either right hand corner um, of your screen and it pulls up that menu and you're going to go down to where it says settings and when you push on that um, or actually it'll say change PC settings you can click on that and then you've got that power button just like you had before so here's where you can shut down and restart from Windows 8 so if you have Windows 8 right now go ahead and and just kinda of find that on your Windows 8 the power on and off button which if you've been using it you probably have been doing this for quite some time but I just wanted to explain to you how it differs from um, Windows 7, Vista, and XP. 
All right, well, congratulations. You made it. You completed Computers 101, or Basic Computers, and you should be very, very proud of yourself. Take a deep breath and relax, because it's over. Without your participation, we wouldn't be able to stream these videos, so I want to personally thank you for taking the time to look at this. If you have questions about this video or any of the other stream classes, please feel free to call me or email me. Um, and also be looking for the other classes. And don't forget to give me your computer class pass code that's embedded inside of this video so I can give you credit for taking the classes. So congratulations. Take a deep breath. It's over. And uh, have a great day. Thanks for, thanks for being here. This class could not have been taken part without the following website's information and their pictures. Thank you to the following websites or information for their pictures so we were able to stream this class.